1976 Rose Bowl game. And we have the usual 106,000 here. It may be a bit chilly for Californians. Temperatures in the mid 50s, but it's an ideal day for football at that temperature anywhere in America. Kurt Gowdy, Al D. Rogatis, Happy New Year, everybody. Today, Ohio State going for the national championship that has barely eluded them the last three years. If they beat the UCLA Bruins, they've got it. For UCLA, big underdogs, a chance for a tremendous upset in Rose Bowl history. The two teams met earlier, Al, 41-20 this year, back in October 4th. Ohio State the winner. What about a psychological rematch? Whose favor is it? Well, I've got to give that psychological advantage, despite what some folks are saying. I give it to Ohio State. When you've won, you know you can win, Kurt. And the difference, I think, is interesting. One team, Ohio State, comes right at you. They use that eye, and they're always right uh, hitting you where you live. The other team, finesse, going down that line of scrimmage. It's going to be interesting to see this contrast de develop. I know one thing today. We won't have our cameras much off. Number 15, Shiver of UCLA, or number 7, Green of Ohio State. They're the quarterbacks. They, they are very tricky. They're great uh, ball handlers. They're either going to give, they're going to fake, they're going to keep, or they're going to pitch out. And you won't know what's going to happen. They don't know what's going to happen as they're instantaneously reading the defense as it unfolds before them. You're right. It's, it's an interesting read also because Archie Griffin is going to be reading that defense from that deep position in the eye, looking at where those defensive linemen are playing, as will John Shira going down the line of scrimmage. And Woody Hayes means that. He talked about his backfield, Green at quarterback, Johnson at fullback, Griffin the tailback, Bash Nagel at wingback. Many say this is one of the greatest college backfields of all time, position by position. Well, you know, Kurt, we were trying to think about the last time we might have seen all four, and I really can't go back. We go back to that great Army team, of course, with Glenn Davis and Doc Blanchard and Max Speedy. Uh, they were close to this team, but this team has size, it has speed, and above all, it has experience. How many people ever start in four Rose Bowl football games? How about a young coach, Dick Vermeil, 39, going against the old veteran? He was almost in awe of Woody yesterday at the luncheon. What do you, what do you think about a young coach against a veteran? Well, it's exciting. Uh, it's exciting for Dick Vermeil. I don't envy his position. I know this. He's a winner. And he showed us that yesterday. He's a classy man, and his players are class going to be exciting, but his players better be ready because he's not playing Woody. No, he's coached under some tremendous men. John Ralston at Stanford for four years back when Stanford came to the Rose Bowl and upset Ohio State and Michigan. And he's... UCLA will be across the way from us. The Ohio State rooting section right down below. They have about 10 or 12,000 here from uh, all over the Midwest. And we're waiting for the Bruins to come out. Here they are, representing the Pac-8, the UCLA Bruins. And now the Ohio State Buckeyes. Down to our right are coming on. One quick note, Kurt, with Ohio State receiving in the last game, for those of you who may not recall it, the first six times Ohio State had the football, they scored. The first time in that game, however, UCLA scored. So. The opening series obviously important. I'd hate to say this, Kurt, but this all might be contrived just to get the UCLA kids a bit more edgy. Red White's waiting. Danny Willis is back at the goal line. Bash Nagel and Griffin are on the 10. And here we go, the 62nd Rose Bowl game. And the kick is to Willis on the five. He's to the, trying to get to the 15. Not much of a return, he's ridden out of bounds on the 17 yard line. He's hit there by Lynn, the cornerback. So UCLA covered that kickoff very well. Anytime you hold a team within the 20, that's the objective of the coaches. Ohio State's ball now on their 17, first down. Their backfield will be Cornelius Green, number seven, a quarterback. The fullback will be Pete Johnson, number 33. The tailback will be Archie Griffin, 45. Bash Nagel's the wing back, 48. Lenny Willis to split in, 89. Larry Kane, 85, is a tight end. Corny Green, the most valuable player of this game last year, the most valuable player of the Big Ten this year. First play from scrimmage. And he keeps the ball. 
rips his way over his 20 and up to his 23 or 4 were Oscar Edwards of Riverside, California. Matty Marin drove him now. Just a comment. The opening series saw a different defense by UCLA. Rather than using their odd defense, they took their right linebacker inside, Terry Totalo, number 56, put him at the line of scrimmage. He made the tackle. Chris Ward's at left tackle for Ohio State. Smith's at left guard. Applegate at center. Error starting at right guard. Danley at right tackle. Second down five. Ohio State from their 22. Archie Griffin, the big hole, and he has a first down. Terry Tatulo, the inside linebacker, made the hit on him. Here's the key. Now they're in their odd. Frazier's head up on the middle. A double team on him. They try to get the fullback into Tatalo, the middle linebacker. In that time, they went to the three-man front with four linebackers. Our first first down of the game, Archie Griffin's been a starter for Ohio State since the third game of his freshman season. There is now the center. And there's Green on a bad toss. Looks like a possible UCLA recall. Ohio State's on it. UCLA had two shots on it. Who's got the ball here? UCLA had two men right there on a bad toss out by Green. And we nearly had our first big break here. We're going to see a little bit of a guessing game now. This UCLA defense is not going to show that one picture. They're going to show an odd man line. That's when Frazier, Clifford Frazier, 76, is on the nose. They'll show an even man line when number 56, Tatalo, goes to the line of scrimmage. The wide linebackers are going to pay that, play that pitch out, as you just saw when uh, Woody Green came down, Cornelius Green, rather, came down the line of scrimmage. Errors at center. Luke is at right guard for Ohio State. Second down, 14. Fast Nagel in motion. Green fading for the first throw of the game, and it is complete. If it's inbound, great toss. He hits Lenny Willis to split in, and Smith took him up in the air. Lenny Willis, outstanding speed. He plays on a team that doesn't exactly get careless by throwing too much. No, they don't, but uh, this man led the Big Ten in completions, and every time he throws that football five times, he's been completing three of them. Ohio State, year before last, was a pass in the green that gave him the victory over USC. In a slot now, there goes Bashnagel in motion. They're on their 47 with a first down. And that's Griffin. Griffin just reaching the 50-yard line. Dale Curry, second on the UCLA team in tackles this year. A senior from San Mateo made the tackle. He'll play outside to the left. Pete Pele will be the left tackle. Frazier is the nose guard. The right tackle is Tui Asu Kupo, and the outside linebacker is Raymond Burke. Way to go, Curry. We were waiting first for Tui Asu Sopo. Dowd got it. I think you'll have a great game today now. We got to that first. <laughs> Second down, seven. Herman Jones in a split end. Big hole. Man, what a hole there. Archie Griffin hit by Tui Asu Sopo from Long Beach, California, just a freshman. Only two times as a starter in his career has Archie Griffin failed to reach 100 yards in a game. An amazing record for the two-time Heisman Trophy winner. Ohio State has a first down now. They're on the UCLA 43-yard line. Willis back in the game and split in. This drive is carried from the Ohio State 17. Lining up in their eye. Woody Hayes gave credit yesterday at the kickoff luncheon to John McKay. The many of the things we use, we have borrowed from McKay of USC. Griffin. I'll tell you that front line that, that Ayers and Danley and Lukers are just opening them up in there right now. And it's the secondary person and Schmidt who had to make the tackle. And now we have a new split in in Greg Store, number 80. He's another tight end. That gives him more blocking power. Second down to foot. They're in there, what Woody Hayes calls their robust tee. The old full house tee formation. They give the ball to Pete Johnson. He has the first down. Short yardage to him is just a breeze. He has scored 25 touchdowns this year. The all-time record for touchdowns of the year held by Lydell Mitchell, 29 of Penn State. Pele and Raymond Bell on the tackle. 
You have four linebackers. The two inside ones are Bell and Tatulo. The left corner is Barney Person. The right corner is Harold Harden, number two. Oscar Edwards and Pat Schmidt are the safety men. Lenny Willis checked back in. First down, Ohio State. Around the UCLA. 31-yard line. No score early, but UCLA took the opening kickoff and has had it since. There they go again. Pete Johnson, the straight handoff behind Wedge blocking. Tui Asasopo, number 40, made the hit. You know, when you watch a Woody Hayes coach team, it's, it's interesting because the safety men are playing run constantly, disdaining the pass. And it seems like such a temptation for Corny Green not to fake it and just drop back and toss it deep. Very deliberately, the Buckeyes are moving. They've had the ball five minutes now on this grinding march with one pass. They split out into a slot left. Something new here. There goes Archie in motion. They fake. Here goes Green with those quick feet of his. He's... What a runner this fellow is. Look at that. Took the whole UCLA team to bring him down. And sitting right next to me, fighting for Ohio State, is Rex Kern, their former All-American. He was just like Green. And this is the kind of man you have to have in this kind of an offense. Well, he sure makes it exciting. He can move in so many different directions. Lost some yardage here, but he moves well. He has about as pair of quickest feet as I've ever seen, Al. He sure does, Kerry. We're going to see him at some point in this game make some kind of an electrifying run. Now, this is a big play for the Bruins. Third and seven for Ohio State on the UCLA 28. Green, the Griffin, and a landing down on the 26-yard line. He's hit there by Frazier and Tui Asasopo. A two-yard gain. It's on the 26th of UCLA. And coming in now is Tom Claben, born in Czechoslovakia, senior. He's hit two out of seven field goals this year. Bash Nagel will hold. And the field goal will be from the 33, making it a 43-yard field goal attempt. Laban had that big field goal there against Michigan year before last. Bash Nagel spots it. The kick is up. It's got the distance. And the kick is good. A 43-yard field goal by Tom Laban. And Ohio State's out in front. The score, Ohio State 3, UCLA nothing. UCLA now will receive. Ohio State has just shown you the best defense you can have. They had the ball six and a half minutes. After taking the opening kickoff, they went 57 yards with it before they were stopped and kicked the field goal. Spladaney will kick off from the near hash mark, trying to give UCLA less field to operate in. Wally Henry covering the near sideline. Jules Thomas the far, and the kick. Deep. Oh, what a leg he has, that Spladaney. He leads the nation in punting the last few years. He is an outstanding athlete, could be playing regular, but he's such a great kicker that Woody Hayes doesn't want to get him risk uh, injured, so he won't let him play except for the punting duties. He averages 46, 47 yards a punt and kicks him high and very few returns against them. All right, UCLA moves to the attack for the first time from their own 20. Shira the quarterback. Tyler and Ayers are the running backs, and Henry is the flanker. Driver running. Devere gives the ball to number 30, Eddie Air. He doesn't get much. Norm Anderson will be the split end. He's 89. Don Pedersen is the tight end, 85. Pat Curto made that last tackle. Gus Coppins at left tackle. Phil McKinley at left guard. Mitch Kahn the center. Randy Cross the right guard. And Bob Kazarian is the right tackle. Second down, 10. UCLA. Right along your own 20-yard line. Ohio State leading 3-0. Yeah. As he was hit, tried to pitch out and nearly made a disastrous play. Luckily, Wendell Tyler saved the pitch out on the rolling ball on the ground to him. One way to stop the veer is stop the quarterback. And the idea here is to get the quarterback. The man driving in does that. Aaron Brown. 
Here we might, as we look at this deep perimeter of Ohio State, keep, keep our eye on number 43, Bruce Rule. He generally plays on the tight side of the field. Very quick, Beeman, Brown, and Bonamici, in the middle of that Ohio State line, are cat-like. Shire now throwing the pass wide open and completes it to Wally Henry the flanker, but he's short of a first down. He's covered there by Craig Cassidy, whose father, Hopalong, was the Heisman Trophy winner in 1955. The ball will be on the UCLA 28-yard line, fourth and two, and they'll have to give the ball up. In punt formation, it'll be John Sullivan, who averaged 37.4 this year. The safety man is Tim Fox. You'll remember last year, Colsey. Neil Colsey, now starring with the Raiders, was their punt return man. Craig Cassidy's also back short. John Sullivan to do the punting. Flags go down, the kick, the driving spiral, handle on the 27 by Fox to the 30 of Ohio State, and out of bounds. So now while Ohio State gets ready to go to the attack, time out the score, 3-0 Ohio State. Ohio State on its 26th first down. The last 24 seconds of the first period. Green, now starts to run. Boy, I don't know how he got out of that. They pull him down to 31. Should have had him tackle behind the line of scrimmage. What instinct, though. That first move of Green's, if he had released the football, it was an interception and possibly a touchdown. He instantaneously pulled it down and ran and picked up about four yards. Second down, six. And there is the gun. And we have the end of the first period of the 1976 Rose Bowl game. The score is Ohio State 3 at UCLA nothing. Kurt Gowdy and Aldi Rogatis as we enter the second period. The Buckeyes leading the UCLA Bruins 3 0. Second down, six, Ohio State on its 30 yard line. Ohio State's had 19 plays from scrimmage to six for UCLA. Green handing off to Archie Griffin, who was stopped by the nose guard, Cliff Frazier, number 76. And Griffin now has 44 yards rushing. He's a leading rusher. Ohio State has 90, 98 yards total offense. The UCLA's 14. This is a this is actually was an excellent first first quarter for UCLA. Statistically, they lost, but they did pretty well on the scoreboard, and they're holding them very well. 85. Larry Kane, good tight end for Ohio State. Good hand. Third down, four for Ohio State. Ash Nagel in motion, and they pile him up. Go to the first down. Pete Johnson stacked up by Cliff Frazier and Raymond Bell. And Tui off the Sopo. And here's Sladaney, and now you're going to watch the premier punter in collegiate ranks, Tom Sladaney, averaging 47 yards a kick this year. He kicks him deep, and he kicks him high. And he gets very little yardage against him on punt return. Dankworth, number 19, and Severin Reese, number one, are back. This man is the finest punter in the history of Ohio State. He gets a low kickoff. Not a good one for him. On the 31-yard line, Dankworth has it. Being safe. And up to the 30. Still going. And down to the 34. All right, Rick Walker's gone in the tight end. He's to the left. Anderson is split into the right. Shira down that line of scrimmage trying to work the ball. And there's a hit on Eddie Ayers. By Aaron Brown, his sophomore, it is really cat-like in there with Nick Bonamici, the junior right tackle. All three of these men, as we told you in the middle, Beeman, 67, Brown, 55, and Bonamici, 75, have tr a tremendous potential. Their best days are ahead, probably. They're very good right now. They develop rapidly this year. Se uh, Severin Reese is out of the flanker. Wally Henry comes in, number eight. It is now second down 11. UCLA cannot move so far against Ohio State. Great drop back pass to the 35 yard line and down goes Rick Walker on his 35, maybe falling to his 36. Greg Cassidy, quite a story. Played behind Neil Colsey three years. Famous father, never gave up. This year, he finally got the shot and he's improved with each game. He had eight interceptions. 
Greg Cassidy. Probably Not easy to be the son of a famous platter at the same school. Probably the finest receiver, and maybe the man with the quickest speed is Wally Henry, number eight. This is a third down and eight for UCLA. They have to get something moving. Here's a deep bomb. It's well covered. Smothered all the way. Intended for Norm Anderson. And he was taken down the field by Rule and Griffin. Some of the UCLA fans thought he was held up going down the sideline. Ray Griffin, number 44, is Archie's brother. And Duncan Griffin is a freshman, 46. And there's a ninth grade player in Columbus, Keith Griffin. On and on they come. Punt formation again as John Sullivan. Fox and Cassidy are back deep. This is a beautiful kick. Facing Fox back to his eight. Gives the ball up on reverse to the 15. The 20 and down at the 24 is Ray Griffin. They really worked that reverse beautifully. So they brought it back from the eight and spot it down on the 23. If Ohio State will take a timeout. There's your score in a tight one. Ohio State three, UCLA nothing. Well, you'll have to give uh, those men in the middle a lot of credit in UCLA, and now their pass rush, because they've had the ball, UCLA, only four minutes and 24 seconds to 1936 for Ohio State. And UCLA does not have a first down, and the score is only 3 nothing. Ohio State has nine first downs. Shira to throw. Shoots it out. Crossing pattern. Intercepted. Intercepted by Bruce Rule, number 43. The pass is tennis for Norm Anderson. That is the first turnover of the game. The man on the other side is Cassidy. He made eight interceptions. Bruce Rule doesn't get that much thrown at him for making this interception and giving Ohio State just excellent field position. Bruce Rule, Southfield, Michigan, a junior. He plays the closed end of the field with the halfback position. Greg Cassidy, the wide open side. First down now, Ohio State. On the UCLA 47. Green to Johnson. Johnson on a sort of a fierce slant. Close to the 40-yard line of UCLA. First down yardage. Ohio State's average five yards on first down. UCLA one half of a yard on first down. On a second and nine and a half to go, you're in trouble. We pause briefly. For station identification, this is the NBC Television Network. Bert Gowdy and Aldi got us back with you from the Rose Bowl. Hammering ahead again is Pete Johnson. They're going to him now a lot. Greg Storer, a tight end, has replaced Lenny Willis. Have a double tight end offense in. Get some extra blocking. Frazier made that last stop. And coming on now is Bruce Davis, 71, for UCLA. They're going to go with that heavy front again. They're going to go with a four-man front. This is where Cornelius Green is so valuable. He decides to keep. He's got that ability. Third down and a yard to go for Ohio State. He may have it. He was stopped at first, Pete Johnson. In that second extra, Terry Totolo made the hit on him. And what's this? Woody's out there. Woody Hayes. <laughs> Just wanted a check, I guess. Or the wide side of the football may have been a field. Fight. The wide side of the football field is to the top of your screen. Dale Curry, 83, has a big responsibility out there. There, back in its center now. I think there was a little scramble and all that pile up and Woody was going out to be the pacifier. Here's Green. Coming back again. This may be a big yardage play. I mean, he takes nothing into something all the time. He takes disaster into triumph. Are those feet of his. Here's the situation again where the wide linebacker makes such an excellent play. Now, Green knew there was nowhere to go. Curry had it cut off. The outside, the defensive end, Pele, had it cut off. 
Here's where he shows his mobility. The most dangerous, perhaps the most dangerous man they've got. He gained 473 yards on the ground this year, ran for eight touchdowns, passed for six, first down Ohio State on the UCLA 21. Three to nothing, Ohio State ahead. And the pitch off just in time, the bubble, and UCLA Barney Green lost the ball. After some very clever ball handling, they lose it over, and they're going to give it to UCLA. Again, they stopped an Ohio State drive. Cliff Frazier on the ball. Last time they had the football, as we take another look at this, they go for the dive man first. That was the end coming into the inside. Indecision. He did not see that man come, and he got popped. Comment I was going to make, UCLA. Last time they had the football, Shira went up top. Bruce Rule intercepted. This time, he'll probably keep it on the ground. We have five minutes, seven seconds and a half, three nothing. UCLA has three yards rushing so far in the first half. And they've been trying to pass lately. The last one was intercepted. Shira. Great dive tackle play off to Wendell Tyler. And the Bruins just can't budge that front line. Bonamici, 75. Brown, 55. It's on the 18-yard line of UCLA. Second down, nine. UCLA, 15-point underdogs. Has had a fighting defensive club on that field. It held Ohio State to three points in the first half. Wendell Tyler, he's their running hope. And here is Shira pitching out. And he is landing. Ray Griffith comes up to hit Tyler. You think Ohio State's good on offense? How about their defensive club? Cat like. Boy, they're quick. Tyler's problem, they say, is he fumbles. Well, he didn't fumble here, and he got hit pretty well. This man has been averaging 6.5 every time he's carried the football. So far, he hasn't carried that much. There's Ray. I guess all the Griffins play well. Third down. Nine to go. UCLA still not, does not have a first down in this game. Ohio State ahead, 3 nothing On the 18-yard line. Shira fading. Foster the he's got it. There's the first first down. Don Pedersen, the tight end. He was hit by Ray Griffin. First first down for UCLA. What a pretty play, too. It was a little crossing pattern. The man gets into the zone, clears his linebacker. Shira, though only 5'10", his line did such an effective job of blocking. Drills it right in there. Good, good pass. He had combined 1,900 yards this year, 1,100 passing, 800 rushing, and he had just under 50% of passing. Everybody thinks of him as strictly a running quarterback, but he can throw, too. First down for the Bruins. There they go on the dive tackle play off the beer, Eddie Ayer. That's just a straight handoff. They double team, and uh, the halfback just dives straight ahead. The old dive tackle play off the split tee out. The old dive tackle play. You're right, Kurt. That's such a tough thing to, to realize that quarterback is reading. Now he can put it in there or pull it back. The man we haven't seen them really work with, I think could be exciting, is number eight, and that's Wally Henry. All right, they're spreading him to the left, and Norm Anderson to the right on second down six. Three nothing, Ohio State. There's a pass out, and completes the penalty to the tight end. He's got it for a first down at the UCLA 49-yard line. Tim Fox, the safety man, hit him right after he caught the ball. Good throw. Fine running catch by the tight end. First down, two in a row for UCLA. They're on their 49. They have two minutes and a half to go in the first half. And they're moving Ohio State now in the air. They're in a slot right formation. Shira giving to Wendell Tyler. And he goes to the Ohio State 48-yard line where the boundary side linebacker Ken Kuhn got him and Pat Curdo the left end. Dick Vermeil looking out. Woody Hayes looks up at the clock. First downs, Ohio State 11, UCLA 2. 
Archie Griffin looking on as Shiloh Hicks. That's the first tackle for Ohio State. And storming in there is Eddie Beeman, the left tackle, number 67. And that puts the ball back on the UCLA 44. Those three inside men have all excellent speed and good foot movement, strong up top. And if you're going to rush a passer, you need good upper body strength. Well, now it's third down and 15. UCLA coming out on their 44. Putting uh, the slot right formation at the Buckeyes. Shira again with a blitz. Dancing. Goes to the 40. 45. And he's hit from behind and brought down on the 49-yard line of UCLA by Bob Rudzinski, number 84, the junior right end. And Shira showed you some nifty maneuvering against the Pat Rush. They, they were putting a blitz on him that time. You know, going against the most awesome offense in uh, collegiate football in Ohio State, over 400 yards total offense a game and 34-point average a game. It's not a bad first half for the Bruins of UCLA. It'll be the fourth punt for UCLA. Mark Lang replaced Aaron Brown as middle guard for Ohio State. Lang the sophomore from Cincinnati. High snap, he got it away. Another nice kick, a floater. And it is bounding around and down on the Ohio State two-yard line. But only 30 seconds to go. Well, they say the half. kicking game, Kurt, wins football games, and that's one of the reasons. By the way, the fellow with the uh, yellow shirt on the far side that you keep seeing isn't one of the students. That is Dick Vermeil. He looks awfully young. Watch this, Bob. 49-yard punt, Al. The last time he punted, 56 yards. I guess he's John inspired Bell. by Spadani. Ornie Green comes on, and uh, his instructions, of course. Don't lose that ball down there. He'll have Kane in store, and they're tied in. 3 nothing to score, Ohio State. They spotted that punt on their four-yard line. They're in their full house backfield. Straight ahead they go. They give the ball to Pete Johnson. 20, the clock moving. UCLA has two timeouts left. Ohio State three. But evidently, uh, that may be the last play of the first half. As we're running down at 10 seconds and a half now. And Woody Hayes, a 15-point favorite in this game, is going to leave the field just three points ahead of a battling UCLA ball club today. There it is. That's the end of the first half of the 60-second Rose Bowl game. The score is Ohio State 3, UCLA nothing. Now before the kickoff, let's go down for on-field reports. First by Ross Porter. Ohio State's outstanding sophomore nose guard Aaron Brown suffered a minor injury toward the end of the first half. Brown was poked in the eye by one of the UCLA players. He said he was dizzy for a moment, but he feels fine now, and he will start the second half on defense for the Buckeyes. One of UCLA's best offensive linemen was also hurt late in the second quarter, and Barbara Hunter's got a report on him from the Bruins sideline. Yes, and the news is worse for the Bruins, Ross, because guard Randy Cross suffered an ankle injury. He left just prior to the second half. The, the, the exact injury has not been diagnosed yet. We don't know how severe it's going to be, but he will be out for the game. Kurt? All right, thank you, Ross and Barbara. And losing Randy Cross is certainly not going to be much of an aid to that UCLA offense. He's one of their best offensive linemen, and they've had trouble getting... Uh, much yardage today, although their defensive team has really been something out there against the powerful Buckeyes, the nation's leading scoring team, averaging 34 points a game coming into this affair, have been held to just three points, the lone field goal. Net yards, Ohio State 174, UCLA 48. Ohio State ran 36 plays to 18 for UCLA. One turnover for each team. And there they are up on the board for you. And L seems to be a little something missing. Ohio State hasn't made that big play today. You You're right. And I think, Kurt, it may well be the precision that comes from playing week after week. Remember their last game was November 22nd. 
as was uh, the Bruins of UCLA. So neither team is showing the kind of offensive efficiency. You lose less, is my feeling, on defense. The precision of offense is what suffers in a long delay. Nick Vermeil worked his team very hard. Some of his players protested. That they've been worked too hard. He said, look, you're going to the Rose Bowl. You're playing the nation's number one team. It's not a cakewalk. You're going in there, and we're going to work, not just to keep the score close, but to win. Bladaney's kick. This is a squibbler. And Severin Reese picked it up on the five. Or Thomas picked it up. He comes up field, gets up over his 20, the old Thomas, and to his 21-yard line, where Sladaney made the tackle. John Shira. Here's a counter play. There's a pitch out. He gets some yardage to this one to Wendell Tyler. That's the first time on the pitch out option. But they got some yardage. And Ray Griffin, the safety man, ran him out of bounds. Let's go tight on Shari here. And let's take a look at what happens when you move out and what does that linebacker do? The critical position is here. The linebacker has to make the decision and his was to come to the east, east inside. You see Curdo, 75 is Bonamici. It's a double team, a little roll actually to the outside. The man they beat was Curdo Y. And on the dive tackle to Wendell Tyler again. Straight ahead to his 38. Tyler has just run 13 yards for first down. But his last time he ran into Eddie Beeman and Aaron Brown. Oh, it's a gain of three yards and the second down seven. Tell you, if this Tyler gets past that line of scrimmage, and it's an awfully tough thing to do, you're going to see a pretty exciting runner, number 22. Tyler was held at just eight yards. In the first half, man that gained 500 yards this season. Second down, seven. Ohio State ahead, 3 nothing. Shira pitches it to the far side, wide open over there. And Norm Anderson was split in, and they gave him a lot of room. Bruce Rule was playing 10 yards off of him. That'll be another first down for UCLA. Earlier, Kurt, we were going to comment that five men on the defensive unit of Ohio State will flop. Bruce Rule generally plays to the tight side of the field, but the five, the five that flop are Bonamici, Bob Grudzinski, Ed Thompson, Craig Cassidy, and Tim Fox. They're always on the wide side. Wally Henry to the left, Anderson to the right. First down UCLA and the Ohio State 49. Here he comes down that line of scrimmage, pitches him out to 45. And he is going somewhere until he tripped up Wendell Tyler. Ray Griffin hit him, and now Shira and Tyler teaming up on perfect timing on this pitch out. You're right, and here's where the veer is so exciting. The guard is pulling. He holds it and then makes the decision to pitch it. Definitely done. And the later you can wait, the better. To make that forced man commit himself. Second yes. down, three to go. UCLA on the Ohio State 42. Good march here at the opening of the second half. Anthony Cruz, Tyler, he's at the 20, he's at the 15, and he goes down. He nearly broke it all the way, Wendell Tyler. You know, this is a form of a misdirect. You give everything going in one direction, and then you hit your speed man back to that side. Pretty play. The flow was going wide. Get this man to the line of scrimmage, and he's a runner. There's Tyler going down. He had only eight yards in the first half. He's picked up 54 yards in the second half. And that was a 30-yard run by Tyler to the Ohio State 12. Shira out to Tyler. Look out. He blasted down by Ray Griffin, who was playing safety on the close side of the field. And he was ready for that pitch out. He took Tyler down for the loss back to the 16-yard line of Ohio State. A second down and 14. Here's that play, Kurt. The safety man makes a great play here. Now, Shira must read that safety man playing the run. There's always that possibility of his faking the pitch, dropping back, and hitting the spot where Griffin leads. Second and, six, uh, second and 14. 3 0. Ohio State in the lead. Shira over to Wally Henry. Just a quick sideline out. Craig Cassidy had it covered, and uh, he was there. And 
I almost think Shiver just dumped it over his head purposely and out of bounds. Good occurring interception. Third down and 14 for UCLA. They're now in the deepest penetration of the game on third down conversions. Ohio State has converted three out of seven. UCLA one out of five. Passing now, Shira is four out of seven. Third down and 14. Five of eight, let's check that. He's got the protection, he overthrows Henry, running a slant. Ed Thompson tipped the ball. The little Henry, the flanker, was running a slant right into the middle of the end zone. And now the field goal man comes on, Brett White, a senior from Huntington Beach, California, who hit only four out of 11 field goals this year. He'll be kicking from the far hash marks away from you. And let's see, he'll spot it on the 23. It'll make a 33-yard field goal attempt. Dankworth will hold the reserve quarterback. It could tie, but it's good. The kick is up. It is good. We got a tie ball game. Ohio State went down and tied it up with a timeout. It is three to three. All right, White will kick off. Willis, Griffin, and Bashnagel are back deep. Willis in the middle for Ohio State. And he sends a boomer. Willis a yard in the end zone, coming out to the 10. Gets out to his 20 and struggles to his 21, and that's all. First down, Ohio State on his 22. Green to Griffin, bumped into one of his own men. He's filled at the 25-yard line, and he's hit there by Harold Harden, number two, the right cornerback. I'll tell you, you're seeing some interesting maneuvers inside defensively for UCLA. They'll first put Fra Fra uh, Cliff Frazier on the nose. Then they'll put one linebacker next to him. Then the other linebacker will come up, and then Cliff Frazier will drop off. They're really uh, disturbing the blocking of Ohio State. All right, now they're in a slot right. One of the flankers nearly lined up offside and tripped up again, Archie Griffin. And he was starting to go somewhere as he had that big open space ahead of him. But Terry Tatalo made the stop on him. Spot the ball now on the Ohio State 27. UCLA is giving up ground grudgingly right now. It is third down and five for Ohio State. Again, the linebacker, 83, Dale Carey on this side, Raymond Burks, 87 on the far side. Archie Griffin has 75 yards rushing in the game. Bash Nagel in motion. They haven't gone to him yet on a pass. Green keeps, bubbles it out of bounds when he was hit. He's short of the first down. He was really hit there. And that is Jim Tenegut who ran into him. And here's Cladani coming in now. With a fourth and two, Cladani's in the punt, and the UCLA fans give their defensive unit an ovation as they go to the sideline. That was a big defensive stop right there. Three downs, and you have to punt. Cladani now has punted twice, a 45-yard average. Dankworth and Reese are back. Reese on the near side, Dankworth farthest away from you. Cladani kicking high. Fair catch called by Dankworth on his 38-yard line, maybe this 39. It'll be first down, UCLA. UCLA's ball on his 39-yard line. And a tie game, three all. On a quick down attack for Eddie Ayer. Ray Griffin stops him. Now, what's UCLA doing differently now to get this ground game going? Well, Kurt, they're changing their count, but more than that, they are inspired. They're moving off that football. They're attacking the same kind of a defense that they're seeing, and there's a little indecisiveness now on the part of Ohio State. Second and short, great spot. Anderson splits wide right. Wally Henry to the left. Second down, two. UCLA. Not much this time. Maybe a yard, Eddie Ayers. They don't really have that big power back, as we said earlier. They have really two halfbacks behind the quarterback. Ken Kuhn made the tackle. 
And uh, the yardage is enough for a first down, though. Play the officials. As the ball is spotted on the Bruin, 49. Most effective play they've had is that quick hitter with uh, Tyler. Uh, also, they've worked, as we said earlier, on number 90. 90 is playing the short side of the field. All right, the Bruins are smelling a big upset here. They're tied three all, third period. Shira fading. He shoots a pass to number seven, Rick Walker, the tight end. Walker, first down on the 30 yard line. Tim Fox, the safety man, hitting. Perfect pass by Shira. And is he mixing it up? He, he's hitting inside. He's going down the line. He's passing on first down. Mm, yes, right there. Play. UCLA now on the Ohio State 30. That was a 21-yard pass. Ira to a tight end, Rick Walker. First down. They run the reverse back to Henry at the 25. The flanker reverse, Wally Henry. And UCLA really has the grab back plays going now. Are they now. moving it, Kurt? Every possible way. Nice fake inside. Hold the linebacker. When Wally Henry's in tight, watch for him coming back. They played it awfully tight on the offside. The linebacker on that side, above, above all else, should have been looking for something coming back. Well, UCLA had only two first downs in the first half. They're racking up now. They have six first downs already here in the third period. They're dominating Ohio State in this quarter. Gyra on the keeper, the pick down. Wendell Tyler, that play now, couldn't go in the first half, and it is going big in the second half. It's also the spot that they're working, though, Kurt. The number 90 is taking it down the line, Pat Curdo. Again, the decision was made there, and the linebacker had to make a decision. He comes in, and the man is wide open to the outside. Woody Hayes has to be worried. 9-10 to go in the third quarter, but his team is being pushed around in this period. Second down six for UCLA on the Ohio State 16. Shira will put it up. There it is. Touchdown! Holy Henry! And UCLA's in the lead. Or not, that was the finest drive of the football game. That was the kind of diversity that the fear can present. He used absolutely everybody, Kurt. I mean, you, I never saw a football team. They, they did a great job on defense in the first half, but offensively, they have been something to watch here in this third quarter compared to the first half. And he misses it. Off to the left. Here's the replay of the touchdown. Watch the left side now. No rush at all. Drives him to the outside and just pops him perfectly. Well, that's it. We'll take a timeout with a score. UCLA 9, Ohio State 3. Kurt Gowdy and L.D. Rogatis back with you. Stay tuned right after this game for the Orange Bowl for Miami, Oklahoma, Michigan. It's coming to Archie Griffin. They put him in the middle now. He took it on the three-yard line. He's out to the 15, and he hauled down at the 16 and 17-yard line. UCLA stopped Ohio State the last time. Green is going to run the ball out of the pocket. He goes down to the 19. He had a man open momentarily. Cliff Frazier hit him at six nose guard. Helped by Raymond Burks, the outside linebacker. He's the nose guard that Kurt was talking about and just for a moment had him. Actually, Archie Griffin was coming through. Cliff showing good mobility for a big man, almost, and does just enough. Nice play by Frazier. He has outstanding speed. Green. And that one is incomplete. Intended for Lenny Willis to split in. Very Pearson. Very Pearson in there to break it up. Third down and eight. Interestingly enough, 
And we haven't seen Archie Griffin that much, but he's made some truly outstanding, truly outstanding catches. We have seen him twice now come out of the backfield, both times going over the middle. It looked like a break to the outside, and Archie could have been clear. Third down and eight. Ohio State pinned back on his 19-yard line. Pass Nagel in motion. Green again to pass. Way high. He was trying to hit Lenny Willis, and he was overthrowing there. Pat Smith covered the play. Again, Ohio State has to punt. Second time in a row, they failed to move the ball deep in their own territory. And another roar for the UCLA defensive unit. Tom Sedani will do the kicker. Thank you, and Reese is back for UCLA. 8-17 to play here in the third quarter. 9-3, UCLA. The kick to towering. Dankworth, chase back. Takes it on his 24. 25. Going up the sideline. Out of bounds. They're going to call him out on his 35-yard line for Woodrow Roach, an outstanding man on the special team and who'll probably be playing first string in the backfield next year. Wendell Tyler now has outrushed Archie Griffin, 96 to 78 yards. Tyler just four short. And he may have it right there. And all of them but eight yards in the third period. What a quarter he's had. Playing with a fractured left wrist that he's been playing with the last few weeks. Took the cast off for this one. He now has 101 yards rushing in the game. Now we talk so much about Cliff Fraser playing that middle, but right now they're getting to the middle of Ohio State. There are two minutes remaining in the third period. Nine to three, UCLA ahead. Counterplay. Eddie Ayers, number 30, stopped right at the line of scrimmage by Eddie Beeman. And Ken Kuhn, the linebacker, 54. Also carried on that last play, Wally Henry followed himself in a man-on-man -man situation against number 23, Craig Cassidy. They spread Henry to the right. They split out the tight end, Pedersen. And to the left, they put Wally Henry, third and three. There's Henry. He's going. He's at the 30. 20. He's gone. Touchdown. On the play preceding that, they had a man-on-man -man situation. The play was called, it looked like, from the sideline. Henry, who was outstanding, look at this, good blocking. One-on-one, -on -one, he beats the strong side of the Ohio State line. That's Cassidy falling down. I'm sorry, Cassidy, uh, I'm sorry, it was Fox going down, Cassidy pursuing. Yes, sir, Wally Henry, two touchdowns. Let's, Let's take a look at from another angle, Al. Here it is, he's cutting now. Once he, he's got great speed. A cornerback has fallen down. Griffin's trying to get him. Cassidy's trying to get him. No chance, Henry's in there. Here's the point try now by White. It is up, and this one is good. And UCLA is pushing Ohio State around in this third period, something dreadfully. They're not playing like a 15-point underdog, I'll oh, tell sir. you that. They're ahead right now by 13 with a minute and 11 seconds to go. And it's fired, fired up UCLA. Team now has a 16-3 lead. Little Wally Henry has four catches for over 100 yards. And let's talk about John Shirell. He's well, put there when he's had to. He has, and maybe the plays are coming in from the sideline, Kurt, but he sure has impressed. He has used absolutely everyone. And then Wendell Tyler, his exploding up the middle, and the way they're taking the center of the Ohio State defense that dominated in the first half, and they seem to be taking them apart here in the second half. Archie Griffin now standing on the five-yard line waiting for this kickoff, and it's coming to him on the eight. He's up to the 20. 25 is up to the 30, and he's out of bounds. 
We have a minute and four seconds left to go in the third quarter. Bashnagel in motion. Green's going back to throw again. Flares it out to Archie Griffin. The 40, the 45, first down Ohio State. He's tackled by Cliff Frazier, that nose guard running up back down from behind again. That big man can move. 76, Frazier. Now 76 ought to look for something coming right at him. Once they get you moving that way, and you're right, he moves extremely well for a big man, but occasionally you move too quickly and they pop it right by you. This is Ohio State's first first down of the third period. They're trailing 16 to three. Green lobs it, and can, there's a fumble, incomplete pass, incomplete pass. Pete Johnson never had control of the ball. Through the axe common to football. So it's an incomplete pass. Raymond Bell hit him there. When Johnson circled out, did that little C pattern coming out of the backfield from his pullback spot. Second down, 10. This might set an all-time record for the number of times Ohio State throws. I was just about to say that. People who complain about Ohio State not passing, they've gone wild with a pass here in the third quarter. Green's back again. Now, now, he lets it go, and he's got a man open along the sideline, and it is going to be out on the 40, and that's Pete Johnson, the fullback, number 33, who caught it. Only his second reception of the year and that, I think, was his fourth or fifth time. He had one big touchdown, however. He steps out of bounds here now. Comes down with one foot inbounds in the college rule. All right, there he's out of bounds on the second step down. So Ohio State passing the ball down the field. 22 seconds to go. They have a first down on the UCLA 41 yard. First down, Ohio State. Archie Griffin. Riding him was Dale Curry, number 83, the left linebacker. Griffin was looking outside tackle, saw the hole closed, quickly changed, as you saw, and veered to the inside. It is now on the 33-yard line of UCLA. We're running down to the end of the quarter, and there it is, the end of the third quarter of the 60-second Rose Bowl game. And the score, UCLA 16, Ohio State 3. We've had some calls about the pronunciation of Shira. We asked him yesterday, and he said it's Shira. Shira, some call him. We're going along the way he wants it. Shira, his name, Johnson. He was running there on second and two. As we open the fourth quarter, Kurt Gowdy, LD Rogatis, hope you're enjoying this Rose Bowl game sent your way by NBC. Barney Person on that last tackle. Man, we know that has blinding speed for this uh, Ohio State team, and their insight to, to run this football is Lenny Willis, and we should see him a little later. Out of the robust tee, there's a first down. On the blast play, Storr was leading the way and blocking. Johnson picks up the first down. Raymond Bell, the inside linebacker, on the tackle. On the 27-yard line now of UCLA, Ohio State has been held not only scoreless, but completely outplayed in the second half. Lenny Willis goes back in a split in, replacing Greg Storr. First downs, Ohio State 15, UCLA 12. UCLA had only two first downs in the first half. Green keeping the ball. Now he'll go into his act. He throws at the 20-yard line. He has a receiver. That's Brian Bass. His primary receiver was Lenny Willis. Harold Harden, number two, had him covered perfectly. And this is a ground level shot showing you the mobility of this man. What makes Bashnagel so good is he's always giving his quarterback a passing plane. Six out of 11 for Corny Green. First down Ohio State on the UCLA 16. They just opened the fourth period. And ripping to the 10-yard line, Archie Griffin, and he now is over 100 yards. Archie Griffin. 
Went from the 16 to the 10, a gain of six. He now has 101 yards. Wendell Taylor has 101 yards. Ray Burks, number 87. He has the wide side of the field to this side, number 87. Second down, four, double tight end offense. Pete Johnson was a man that he faked to going up the middle, and Green kept the ball. I'll tell you, Johnson did his act that time. The good faker gets hit by the defense. He just goes in there like he hasn't got the ball, and nobody pays any attention to him. Green gained a yard. Third down and three. Ohio State on the UCLA nine-yard line. Driving to the seven, maybe the six. Johnson taking the handoff from Corny Green. Pete Pele down at the bottom of that pile. The officials are calling time. Fourth down and a foot to go. This drive started on the Ohio State 24-yard line in the closing minutes of the third period. They start cranking that clock up now, a little over 12 minutes to play. Fourth down and a foot. Johnson has a first down. Pete Johnson gets it. First and goal to go for Ohio State. Dale Curry finally stopped him. And you want raw power, you send 248-pound junior fullback Johnson in there. What a run of fullbacks Hayes has had. Rockington, Otis, down the line. First and three to go now for Ohio State touchdown. Johnson is in for the score. Touchdown number 26 this year for Pete Johnson. And a 76-yard drive by Ohio State. In line of, of a number of great offensive tackles, they drive right at Chris Ward. He's only a sophomore, a 6'4 and 270, led in there by number 45. Here's ground level. They think, uh, Al, that Chris Ward is going to be one of their all-time greats, like John Hicks. Dayton, Ohio. And when you run it behind a sophomore, you have to have a lot of confidence in him. The kick is up, and it is good by Clavin. Very important point. UCLA missed an extra point. Look at Woody now. And, well, he gets his club around him. Let's take a timeout with a score. UCLA 16, Ohio State 10. Dick Vermeil, very calm, watching his team receive the kickoff. And it's picked up by Wally Henry, who's already scored two, two touchdowns on pass receptions in the game. He gets it back to the 25-yard line. Sladini went down to make the tackle. Dyra throws. The pass is complete to the split-in Norm Anderson. And he's out of bounds for a first down at the 39 of UCLA. He caught it right in front of Bruce Rule. That was a quick replay from another angle. Now, with a guy like Anderson in front of you, Bruce Rule has that tough time. If he's coming at you, I've got to play pass. If they run, I've got to force the run. Jairus hit 11 out of 16 passing today. Two touchdowns. He keeps the ball, and he is whacked along the line of scrimmage by Rule, the boundary sign halfback, who came up fast to diagnose it. Oh, they're playing that very well now. Earlier, they had been beating Curdo and Rule. Now, Curdo's playing it well, holding the blocker, and Rule is closing very effectively. Second down, 10. Block moving, 10.40 to go in the game. UCLA's ahead of heavily favored Ohio State, 16 to 10. That's the Ohio State band and cheering section. And they're anxious. Deep trouble. Slot right formation. Cyrus toss. And it is complete at the 49-yard line of Wally Henry, who has just caught his fifth pass of the afternoon. Here's Henry all the way, a man in the slot. Henry wide, driving both the deep men deeper. 
and they play off, and they've been playing off this man. They've got great respect for him about this play. He's caught five passes for 113 yards. UCLA, another first down. Now, when Shira has you going like this, Kurt, he also becomes very dangerous as the runner, faking that pitch out and cutting to the inside. First downs now, Ohio State 17, UCLA 14. Dankworth, the reserve quarterback. John Shira has been a true All-American today, leading this UCLA team. Back he goes again. Great protection. He's throwing deep. It is intercepted by Ohio State. Coming up with the ball and out of bounds is Craig Cassidy. The senior Cassidy picked it off. Flag goes down. A flag dropped in front of the Ohio State bench. And it is going to be first a foul against UCLA. A late hit. He's hurt. They're attending him down there in the sideline. And now Ohio State has the ball on the UCLA 35 with a first down. Barney Green's throw is intercepted by UCLA. Coming up is Barry Person. And Person stepped right in front and caught that ball. Kurt, I'm so surprised. I'm really surprised. Woody Hayes had it all going for him. They had the momentum back. They had the ball in great field position, and he went away from the strength. Parson is their person. Barney Parson is their leading interceptor. That's back to back. All right, UCLA now has the ball. Timeout. Fourth period. UCLA 16, Ohio State 10. Here's a replay. Okay, we saw Cassidy, the leading interceptor for Ohio State, and now you see the leading interceptor getting his fifth, playing it perfectly. Barney Person, number 29. First Great down, play. UCLA on their 43-yard line after that 29-yard run back of the interception. Wendell Tyler hitting that quick one again. Eddie Beeman and Pat Curdo stopped him, but not until he's gone to the 48-yard line. Not many minutes from now, we'll be switching to the Orange Bowl, where number two ranked Oklahoma will be playing number four ranked Michigan, and the outcome of this game if it continues the way it is, UCLA leading, Oklahoma may have a shot at the national title in the Orange Bowl. And he leaves in now, replacing errors. Second down to, off to Tyler, 45, 40. Tyler's outside, he's at the 20. He's cutting back, he's in there! Bingo Tyler! Just outrun Bruce Rule completely. Here's where he makes that cutback to the inside. Number 22, a runner. What a day he's had. Here it is again. Watch the other view. Now a burst. Now watch his speed accelerate outside. He nearly goes out of bounds, but those clever feet keep him inbound. Here's his cutback, and he winds up with 164 yards rushing for the afternoon. 164 yards for Wendell Tyler. He broke the all-time seasonal rushing record for UCLA and missed two games. The kick is up, it's good, and this is, unless Ohio State puts on a miracle rally, this will be one of the great upsets of all time in Rose Bowl history. Timeout with a score, UCLA 23, Ohio State 10. Ready to kick off now again for UCLA. Will be Brett White. Bashnagel, Griffin are back deep, and Willis, as UCLA had just been launched farther with that 54-yard run by Wendell Tyler. Archie Griffin trying to get it out. Oh, that's Brian Bashnagel. He's hit. Bashnagel down. Let's quickly go down to Barbara Hunter for a sideline report. 
Kurt, Eddie Ayers is on the UCLA bench. He's apparently in some pain with his left arm and left uh, elbow area. However, he got up very quickly when UCLA made the touchdown. Kurt? Thank you, Barbara. And here again is that time of the football game when the interceptions as Woody Hayes, the old general, I think has the feeling he's lost. But this is where the interception becomes so prominent. And this is also when the linebackers put the big rush on the passer. First down. Green trying to get it out of there. He'll go over the sidelines if he can. And he stays. He's got the first down. The clock stops anyway. Levi Armstrong, the left cornerback, hit him. There's your time and score. And the Orange Bowl, of course, was a super attraction anyway, and it may be even more super. Oklahoma and Michigan, each team defeated once this year. Oklahoma, the number two ranked team in the country. Realizing here that Ohio State is losing, unless Green can pull some miracle. And it is incomplete. So that stops the clock, three minutes and two seconds to play. The tenant for the tight end, Larry Kane. The second down, 10 to go. Ohio State lost last year by one point when USC scored Pat Hayden to J.K. McKay and went for the two-point conversion. The pass was good, and it was Southern Cal 18, Ohio State 17. The year before, Ohio State rolled by Southern Cal. Southern Cal had a big victory over Ohio State in 73. And Ohio State was upset by Stanford before that. Green's pass is complete. And that's the Larry Kane, the tight end. They'll stop the clock. Larry Kane, number 85. Terry Tatalo hit him there in the secondary. Now in that secondary for UCLA, Le Levi Armstrong is playing on the left side. Parsons ordinarily plays that side, but they have him now on the right side, replacing number two, Harold, uh, Harold Hart. Ohio State out on the slot left. Green getting a rush. 87, Raymond Burke got to him. The big rush from the linebackers. Raymond Burks forced Green out of the pocket earlier, and this time you see he's coming on this side. 83, Dale Carey from the far side. Pele, 59, closing in the help out. Green's long toss is broken up at the 25-yard line, intended for Archie Griffin. And the clock stops with 2.29 to play. Levi Armstrong broke it up, and they put another hard rush on Cornelius Green. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Kurt Gowdy and L.D. Regattas back with you. L, I remember another ball game during the regular season. LSU beat Mississippi. Billy Cannon's. Memorable punt return for a touchdown, 7-0. But in a rematch in the Sugar Bowl, Mississippi dumped the favorite LSU team. Green is trying to set something up here. His pass is nowhere near Archie Griffin, or uh, Pete Johnson was down the field. There's nobody open. There's that nose guard, Frazier. Well, you know, they talk about Bear Bryant having such a tough time in bowl games. Actually, the only place that Woody Hayes does not have a record, a winning record, appears to be right here in the Rose Bowl. Favored the last three out of four times he's been here, and he has suffered major losses. Right now, 10 to go. That young man's ahead by 13 points. And Woody Hayes looking up at the clock desperately. Throws the ball, it's incomplete. UCLA will take over. Cliff Frazier got the Cornelius Green. The pass intended for Bashnagel. 
Look at those men around him. Harris Frazier, 76. Number 59 was Pete Pele. And number 87 was Raymond Burke. They have had some kind of a pass rush today. Boy, they sure had. Early in the football game, when Ohio State had to settle for the field goal, when the defense of UCLA suddenly tightened up, you had the feeling it was going to be that kind of a tough afternoon. Here's the big rush. Al, well, they just can't seem to stop Frazier today. He's just going wide open in there. Well, he's so big and so strong. First down, UCLA on the Ohio State 46. Tyler, simple handoff. Pat Curdo stops him. It's the clock now that UCLA is interested in. There it is. There's your score. An historic upset in the making here in the Rose Bowl. UCLA came in as one of the biggest underdogs in years. They were beaten by this Ohio State team on October 4th, 41 to 20, by 21 points. They were underdogs by anywhere 14 to 16 points, and right now they're leading by 13. And they have completely outplayed Ohio State in the second half. They've had one touchdown call back. Wendell Tyler again. What a Rose Bowl he's had. And Chira appears to be setting up that fake to the dive man and that keeper. You saw him go to the right. The other thing about this man, as you look at what probably is for the national championship, that Oklahoma-Michigan game in the Orange Bowl. But the thing that I like so much about the attack is their ability to go right or left. 172 yards for Wendell Tyler. A touchdown run included in there of 54. They go to the 36-yard line. Eddie Ayers is back in. We want to thank Dr. Robert Woods, the team physician of the Los Angeles Dodgers, who's always our stat man out here. And Joe Costanza for their great help today. Rex Kern, the former All-American of Ohio State, working Ohio State for us in any Manishi in UCLA. Thank you all, gentlemen, and a happy New Year to you. Woody Hayes. This may, last year was a bitter defeat for him. He thought his team did not play well. This will have to be one of his bitterest defeats because the national title has eluded him for the previous three years. They thought they could get it today. And now it's going to elude him again. Eddie Ayers, 11 wins in a row. The highest scoring team in America coming into this game. Only one tough game, that was against Michigan. For Emil and his coaching staff. What a job they've done. And John Shiver has been named the most valuable player of this Rose Bowl game. Rightfully so. Wendell Tyler could have been in there. Cliff Frazier, a lot of them. But he guided them. The quarterback, 13 out of 19, he hit in passing. He threw for two touchdowns. He led a confusing, scintillating attack in the second half that baffled Ohio State. And they're counting down, counting down. Fans are out on the field. The clock now stopped with eight seconds to go. 1966 UCLA player Bob Stiles was the last most valuable Woody's winner in the Rose Bowl. There's Woody. He's, He's starting the across the field to Dick Vermeil to shake hands with him and tell him, young man, you really did a great job getting this team ready today. This is human drama. Let's watch it. The old master going over to young Dick Vermeil. It's got to be the first time that They've done hugging. it before the game is over. Wendell Tyler shakes his hand. There it is. Down to two. Woody Hayes undefeated. Glory dreams of a national title. Blown up on him today by an inspired UCLA team, a 15-point underdog who won going away with a final score of 23 to 10. One of the historic upsets of all time of the 62 years of Rose Bowl game. Al DeRogatis, Happy New Year to you before Thank we switch you, to Miami. Happy New Year to you. It's always a special treat to be here at the Rose Bowl. And now Kurt Gotti sending you to the Orange Bowl in Miami and Oklahoma against Michigan.